All right. So let's get down to it. Building bridges is what we're talking about. The bridges are between you and all those other people who form the constellation of the industry that you're trying to get a foothold into. There are many of them. They play a number of different roles. Often the roles are confusing to people who are just starting out. You'll get to know them and get to know what the different functions are as you move forward, but it can be a little bit daunting at first. So we're going to talk about some of those roles today, but primarily no matter whether you're talking about an assistant editor or a junior person on the ladder or the most senior person at a publishing house, what the techniques and methods are to establish and maintain good relationships with them. And as we go through the different bits of advice that are applicable to this topic, I'd like you to think about two parts of the title in particular. Again, successful relationships with influencers in the writing world require you to be skilled at two different but related things. The first is starting relationships and the second is keeping them. So as we discuss a variety of techniques and principles in relation to the overall topic, when you reflect on them later, I want to make sure you think about them within the framework of doing both of these things. A writing career gets complicated and in a good way. You have to stay on top of multiple threads and layers and relationships and it's important to keep them all going steadily and successfully, often at the same time. Initiating relationships effectively and also paying attention to sustaining and growing them over time will serve you very, very well. The first of the ten principles is to know what turns them on. This is no different than if someone wanted to try to strike up a relationship with you if they knew your likes and dislikes, if they knew your hot buttons and your pet peeves, or what you're really looking for in a partner, what excites you, what turns you off, they'd have a much better chance with you. And the same goes here. It's, it's really no different. And let's start with one of the more straightforward parts of establishing good relationships, but one that's really often overlooked or, I dare say, deliberately bypassed for a bunch of reasons. Publications and publishing houses set submission parameters for a reason. When you decide to flout them, it sends a message to them that you don't particularly care about their rules, which to them implies that if they did want to work with you, you might then not care about other things either, like deadlines or word count or formatting or promotion that they might ask you to do or social media or anything else that they consider important in your working relationship. Usually guidelines are pretty easy to follow, so it's curious to me when writers decide to thumb their nose at them for any reason. Given that it's a difficult industry, you want to do as much as you can to get votes in your favor and as little as you can to cast yourself in any kind of negative or difficult light. So right out of the gate, the very easiest way to show that you're a positive partner is to follow the guidelines that they do the favor of laying out in black and white. Just grab Writer's Market or any publications that provide guidelines and they will typically tell you exactly how to submit work. There's no good argument for not doing this, folks. Even if you question the logic behind them, they are what they are. Your goal is to get your writing in the door, so bring it to the door exactly as you're asked to do. 